Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to this online course on legal language, legal including general English. This is lecture 17 and I am Dr. Divya Gupta, an assistant professor at GLA University, Mathura. Today we are going to begin with brief writing and drafting of law reports. In this case, many students who are sitting over here, they might be thinking that what is the utility of learning the drafting of law reports. Listen, this is actually a very important and it plays a pivotal role in drafting part. Since all the students who are watching this video, they know it very well that first of all they want to become a successful lawyer and the second one is they want to get a very good or they want to clear these exams with a good credits. So, in that condition, if you want to really go through, this is the first step where you can hone your skills of learning and writing. So, with this note, let us move up to the next slide, the first slide where what are the learning outcomes of this particular lecture. When it comes to the learning outcomes, remember, you would learn the format of report writing, the importance and application in legal studies, legal drafting that is entirely different from the casual regular routine reports that we used to write. Further, you will learn the difference of legal report writing and regular report writing and how drafting a law report with the provided specimen because I am going to show you something or the specimen the specimen of brief report writing on the basis of legal uh, terminologies and legal uh, like you can say some kind of legal inclinations. So, further you would learn the difference and with the help of specimen you will learn all the intricacies of writing a, dra a drafting a report. With this note, I am going to discuss the content. What are the contents that you are going to learn over here? As if I told you, you are going to learn the essential requisites of brief writing and drafting of law reports. Further, that I have already mentioned, difference between legal report writing which is very important and second one is regular report writing and along with the specimen of report writing. So, what is brief writing and drafting of law reports? Actually, there are, it is an essential skill of legal professionals. And above that, if you talk about legal maxims, if you add some legal maxims, if you are going to add some legal Latin phrases and idioms in that, that will add one more feather to your writing skills. That is for sure. So, these skills help in presenting legal arguments, decisions and case summaries effectively. My dear students, dear students, remember that if you are going to include all these things, case summaries, case laws in all these legal reports, they are going to be a wonderful drafting. Further, these are the essential requisites with which you are going to draft your brief writing and drafting of law reports. So, there are certain parameters around 15 I have mentioned over here and these 15 includes the grammatical part and your learning skills of thorough knowledge of your case laws, your case studies then your legal maxims, you must know like suppose if I talk about any topic, any any rule, any case law, you must know about the details of those things. For example, clarity and conciseness, you must focus on proper structure because we are going to deal with them one by one in next few slides, remember. So, you must know everyone that all these things are important parameters on which your drafting is done. So, yes of course, citation and references are very important, proper format means the structure part is very important, legal analysis, if you are quoting some kind of like legal uh, law report, in that condition you must have the thorough idea of the same thing. 
because when it comes to facts and chronological you must know that law report is actually something based on uh, common laws and published basically published recorded record of a judicial decisions that is cited by lawyers and judges for their use as precedent in subsequent cases so in that condition i have told you that you must be particular about case summaries the report of a decision when it comes to report it is actually when it talks about report it will certainly be discussing about the decision contains what are the decisions that were taken about so decisions are really very important when it comes to it and what are the certain thing what are certain parameters like title first of all you must talk about the title of the case you must talk about the statement statement of the facts given rise to the litigation so you must know about the statements further you must know about the history of history of that particular case in the court so these three elements are really very important when it comes to case summaries further you you must talk about neutral tone neutral tone means it should not be very aggressive it should not use some kind of like uh, colloquial speech or maybe colloquial words it must have the legal maxims and phrases further proof reading and editing is also very important you cannot actually write you can just you have several stages of writing and in that several stages of writing you must know that yeah, that yes proof reading is an essential part once you have drafted first draft then second draft third draft so final draft will be after proof re proof reading that means you must show it to your peers or somebody and get the feedback of the same before submitting to the higher authorities conclusion and signature and significant uh, certification yes signature and certification is again a very important thing because sometimes it is very important to show the authentication when it comes to authentication part remember certification and your signature matters a lot in legal reports remember then compliance with court rules suppose if you are giving some kind of like ideology or some kind of like you are trying to refer some case some precedents in that condition you must know that this particular precedents on the basis of this precedents i am coming up with this decision so you must know you must have a thorough idea about the previous cases that were fought on the basis of this particular term we have i am going to discuss certain specimens on the basis of that and uh, i'm going to give you certain examples also related to this so that like be aware be alert everyone so compliance with court rules and appropriate length obviously when it comes to report writing remember when it comes to report writing it is around 100 to uh, maybe like when it comes to a detailed report writing it will be 1000 to 1200 words and along with that you must include all the facts that are required you must include the uh, uh, like the basic things that are required in this title of the case then uh, the summary then the decision taken all these things matter a lot then last ethical consideration since you are the part of the society you cannot go you cannot actually run over or go be out without the ethical consideration it is again a very important thing and then relevance how much your work is relevant to or your report is relevant for the legal authorities so with this i am going to discuss all these points in a brief summary so that we can go on with and employ much more time with the specimen part because that is again a very important thing clarity and concise yes of course you must use some legal maxims it is not a regular speech that you are giving or regular routine work that you are writing it is it must have the uh, like uh, you must use plain and straight forward language to ensure that the content is easily understood by readers and legal experts not be and may not be uh, who may not be the legal experts even even the people who are not the legal experts they must also understand this thing be nice and avoid unnecessary words or phrases eliminate vocabulary to make document more reader friendly so in that case like please make that very much particular about the same thing proper structure format of the same thing i have told you that what is the format that we are going to follow in this report writing you must know that it must have the title then it must have the case summaries then it must uh, carry on with certain other uh, like uh, things so let's see what is the proper structure 
it must have clear logical structure use headings subheadings to break down complex topics make document easier to navigate and start with the introduction that provides context and outlines the purpose of the brief or report so you must know that what is the particular format of this writing report drafting a legal report which is very much different from the report writing of casual or you can say or a regular type citation and references are very important if we are coming up with certain statutes if we are coming up with some legal authorities remember to mention the statutes you must mention the regulations you must mention the case laws you must mention the legal textbooks they are really very important that statutes are important regulations are important case laws and legal textbooks so remember to cite the uh, the books the articles and the statutes correctly under section 300 this under section 27 environmental study so you can not actually go without statutes and regulations or maybe case laws follow the appropriate citation style citation style generally we say that apa style or we can say the mla style in normal context but when it comes to legal authorities remember we we, we generally focus on blue book blue book style and prescribed by juristic juristics so consistently throughout the document you must cite on the basis of blue book because this is again used in legal uh, references legal analysis after making the analysis thorough analysis of everything you must talk about legal principles statutes and precedents applying them in the case or arguments it would be well organized arguments supporting them with your own data with sound legal reasonings that means like if you are trying to defend your client you must use that precedents also you must use certain case laws also to defend him further facts and chronology if you are setting up if you are coming up with giving the examples giving some kind of like uh, uh, facts portraying some facts then please be very particular about the chronological order because reverse chronological order or chronological order please follow a particular type in this case you must have the clear and concise over you view of the facts of the case legal matter so you must have the chronological account of events that means 1 2 3 4 5 6 and if applicable give context to the legal analysis and yes please be very particular to distinguish between the facts assumptions and legal arguments listen you all are not going to be the judge like you are not going to judge the whole scenario on the basis of your own perception rather you are going to first of all give the facts which are really very important what is the actual situation first come up with facts then come up with assumptions and after those assumptions try to come up with legal arguments whatever your arguments are you just come up with that argumentation yes i told you that argumentation is again very important because it must have the headings and labels to distinguish between them and present persuasiveness should be there in argumentation it should not be uh, like uh, relevant to legal authorities and it must be persuasive and very convincing persuasive means like in a very convincing tone you must have that kind of like you cannot actually go without that persuasion persuasive skills argumentation with logics and reasoning yes of course case summaries are going to add one more feather to it because all these key facts come up with legal issues and court holdings and decisions when it comes to law reports you cannot write a law report without key facts without legal issues and without court holdings and decisions i'll highlight some points in the specimen also which i'm going to come up with uh, in the later half of this uh, lecture and uh, highlight the presidential value of the cases cited presidential values like suppose if you if somebody has uh, like filed a case against someone who lives in a green tribunal area and creates a uh, create some kind of ruckus or maybe some kind of like problem in that condition in that condition what you must remember that it must know you must try to highlight the presidential value of the cases cited 
you cannot actually talk about an individual case rather you want to talk about that case on the basis of certain parameters certain precedence cases which have already taken place earlier so this is really very important again i told you neutral tone is going to help out in that condition proofreading and editing thoroughly proofreading and editing plays an important role you must ensure the consistency remember in language and style it should not it should not be a an informal way of dealing with it because this is a legal document remember be very particular about your grammar spellings punctuations and formatting you cannot overlook you cannot actually go without them you must know about metaphorical and syntactical pattern and syntactical pattern now in this condition when it comes to syntactical pattern and uh, metaphorical uh, like uh, patterns you must know that which kind of uh, nouns could be used then which kind of like uh, uh, pos parts of speech are going to be employed whether it should be uh, using the active voice or passive voice it should have the active voice every time then it must uh, be very particular about which uh, like uh, grammar aspect may be like which aspect of uh, like tense would be used time uh, would be used present past or future so and and perfect spellings with punctuations they are very important then go on with conclusion part conclusion is summarize the main points and conclusion of the brief or report in a clear and concise manner you must know that when it comes to case laws when it comes to case laws remember the conclusions are really very important and case laws it will be divided into i'll tell you i'll tell you in a uh, uh, paragraph wise like in first paragraph when it comes to first paragraph what are the things that you are going to mention it must mention the section number the name of the case law if any and after that theory to which theory to which the question or case relates then paragraph 2 will actually talk about the discussion it will discuss the facts basically it will discuss the facts of the case of the case and arrives the at the solution and uh, further paragraph 3 you must talk about certainly final conclusion basically what is the final conclusion in that condition you must know that final conclusion or recommendation is really very important when it comes to recommendation it should be mentioned in the paragraph so these three paragraphs are important in first paragraph section number is important second paragraph facts of the case is important along with the arrive which arrives at the solution and paragraph 3 which comes with final conclusion so in that condition this is the conclusion part after conclusion yes at the end you will write the signature you will come up with signature and certification part in signature and certification part what is the most important thing it's no matter like uh, sometimes it is very essential but sometimes you can skip it out in some cases uh, please mention in some cases the brief or report may require signature or certification by the author why is it important to show the authenticity it is really very important when it comes to authenticity and accuracy remember authenticity and accuracy is again a very important part and therefore you take the guarantee is if i am writing the report i take the guarantee that whatever i am just i have added in this particular uh, report is true to my knowledge that is the reason why accuracy and authenticity is important over here then further we talk about compliance with court rules whatever court rules we are actually incorporating in our law report you must know that all these court rules should comply with the actual data when drafting legal briefs of court ensure compliance with court rules procedures regarding formatting word limits submission deadline so whatever your uh, court rules are like suppose if you want to submit if they have given you the target of 15 days within 15 days you have to come up with that law report so it must have it must be submitted within the deadlines and proper word limit if they have given you 1000 to 1 uh, 1200 word limit or maybe more than that or maybe less than that a brief one then it must be different so just follow all the rules that uh, court provides further you must uh, not go beyond the appropriate length 
be thorough but avoid unnecessary exaggeration of ideas because avoiding avoiding lengthiness obviously lengthiness is also going to create the uh, work or uh, make it more tedious to read someone by someone so avoid unnecessary lengthening of anything ethical consideration because it since we deal with something that is related to uh, you know that is related to legal authentication and when it comes to legal authentication you have to be very much particular about using them using them in a proper manner with ethical consideration there are some ethics there are some ethics where everyone is to be very much particular about those things so adhere adhere to ethical standards rules of professional conduct and drafting legal documents because it is the confidentiality you cannot leak the things you cannot actually uh, reveal the truth since it is confidential you cannot reveal the truth in front of anyone else or the data or the facts in front of anyone else if you have the proof avoid conflicts of interest so in that condition this is your task to be very much particular about the ethical consideration when it comes to law report since you are a reliable person from the law side and that is the reason why you must follow that ethical consideration how much your report is relevant ensure that all content in the brief or report is directly relevant to the issues at hand if you are talking about some some issues take talk about if you are talking about environmental conservation it must deal with certain cases certain statutes certain precedences that are related to that particular uh, field so it should be relevant to that and irrelevant and extraneous information can distract or detract from the documents effectiveness so remember they are really very important now this is the whole format on or you can say the parameters through which you can judge you can judge these uh, like you can draft a wonderful report but how these reports are different from a regular report my dear learners you must know that a regular report is written for academic purpose many times for academic purpose maybe sometimes for mnc's sometimes you must write them with the help of uh, some data that are provided for the time being by the management but on the other hand when it comes to legal report that is something related to the law and legal authenticity so what is the difference between regular reports and legal report even the format is also different remember i'll tell you about the format difference in format also so let's begin with legal report and regular reports the difference between them so the first thing is when it comes to objective remember it must focus it must present a comprehensive and objective analysis of legal issues when it comes to aim remember that legal report focus on objective analysis of legal issues whereas when it comes to generally like when it comes to regular reports it is generally more flexible it is generally more informal it is focusing it's it's generally focusing and conveying the information or insights in a straight forward manner remember that whenever you are writing a law report it must have the objective analysis of the case laws of legal legal issues then it comes to aim what is the aim of legal report basically to discuss the facts to discuss the analysis to discuss the findings sometimes sometimes recommendation others uh, you can write down the citations the references so they the aim of these legal report is to provide legal opinions analyze cases and recommendations legal research and principles so you must know that it will it it actually deals with the recommendations with legal researches and with principles on the other part if i talk about regular reports remember the aim of regular report is various in in non legal context such as sometimes for business sometimes for education sometimes for personal communication for example if the management asks somebody uh, the manager to draft a report showing the growth of the company so that will be different that will be different in uh, in format in the aim in the objective and while talking about even the language also that will be different and yes when it comes to legal report 
you must know that legal professionals it is meant for or used by legal professionals sometimes by judges sometimes by uh, attorneys by policy makers so all these things are important and when it comes to uh, regular reports they are basically meant to inform the colleagues the colleagues stakeholders and general public about particular situation or issue so you must know that these are the difference difference between uh, the legal report and regular report and basically when it comes to legal report and regular reports the audience also changes you know audience for a specialized audience that when it comes to legal report it is meant for specialized audience it's not for all the people who are there and including legal professionals along with in government officials sometimes sometimes other part or individuals maybe sometimes involving legal decision making power committees so all these people like legal reports the audience are like this whereas if i talk about regular uh, reports that we draft that is meant for broader audience broader audience maybe uh, the colleagues part the people who are working in the same firm maybe managers or general public so it would be like that remember when it comes to language part yes legal report will have the formal language the formal and precise language it must use the word concise and they often include legal terminologies and references to statutes case laws regulations and policy makers yes remember that regulations and policy makers it's again a very important part then further what is the difference between language of these regular reports when it comes to casual report and regular reports remember that it must definitely uh, use the more conversational tone but avoid legal jargons remember you cannot use the legal jargons in that otherwise people are going to open up the dictionaries or maybe google the terms so that is not required the language is straight forward and aims to be easily understood by diverse readership so it should not be very hard to understand further there are few other uh, differences when it comes to structure part and style the structure and style on the basis of that also they are different structure means format when it comes to format remember what is the first thing that is there introduction we'll see the difference we'll see uh, the uh, writing skills the format of the same thing in our upcoming specimen so first of all the introduction is there second one which which includes the title of the whole uh, like legal report legal issues legal issues ma uh, means like you must know which are the facts related to it what are the basic uh, requirement of that allegation and you must know that how you can come up with the analysis part then conclusion and recommendations at the end citations and references are important so legal report includes all these six elements introduction then legal issues analysis conclusion recommendation and citations they are very important but when it comes to regular rep uh, reports when it comes to regular reports i hope you remember in my writing skill section i told you that how to write a draft a report in that condition you write the title or you write the heading on the top and after that heading there are three options on the a uh, center aligned part when when it comes to the page it's like that and three options name of the uh, reporter then his designation and after that his designation put a comma and then name of the newspaper newspaper's name after that date and place and put a colon after this and then you start writing from here this is casual this is a routine report and when it comes to regular reports remember the things that you must ponder is when it comes to regular report they they actually means about that routine report it must talk about routine report periodic report progress report status report operational management administrative summary report performance report then project report also and uh, incident report also financial report also research compliances evaluation so there are many things where people can understand that these are regular reports regular reports include several categories you know but when it comes to uh, the part of legal report style style means in this language part and styling they all are very important style the writing style is formal 
since it has to be a legal document formal of with objectives and focused on legal analysis along with clarity and precision clarity and precision is actually required everywhere everywhere believe me nobody is there sitting all uh, like uh, idle or without any task reading all the long documents no no they all are busy actually so please try to write few words but with lot of meaning in it and whereas when it comes to regular report writing you must know that these styles are important and in this you must use a more relaxed colloquial not the colloquial one but it must give the room for creativity creativity you must use a personal touch you can come up with clarity of thoughts and emphasize on effective communication is required yes of course these are basic differences between uh, legal report and regular reports remember when it comes to legal report and uh, regular reports there are few parameters on which we can we can actually differentiate between them they are structure their uh, their language their style their audience their objectives their aims so all these things all these parameters makes the difference further now coming up with yes what i told you is the specimen of our brief law report i told you that with the example also you will learn how to draft a brief report most of the time i told you that in my previous session also like in in this uh, one uh, when i talk about structure when i talk about structure yes so here i've already told you the first one is introduction second one is legal analysis third one is legal issues and third one is analysis fourth is con conclusion fifth is recommendation after that you must know that it must have the citation but before that like you this is a proper format or pattern which you are going to follow but but do you really think that is sufficient enough no my dear learners you must have a thorough knowledge content and without that content all this format is not going to help you out read a lot when it comes to some kind of like um, uh, glanville maxwell uh, in that condition it is had has been asked that what is more important reading the case laws or or churning up with the reports so basically when it comes to that part remember this is the specimen that we are going to talk so the question that i have taken is this is a kind of like um, uh, it's not a real case but i have written it Uh, with the fictional characters uh, with the fictional characters and with those fictional characters i'm going to come up with certain other things so write a brief law report in this case write a brief law report for the person named mr koshlendr bhagat that is a fictional character remember residing in taj trapezium zone and creating environmental harm caused by the discharge of hazardous substance in yamuna river are you getting the reason i getting the, the the topic that i have taken so it is all related to taj trapezium zone where this person the allegation is that he actually has caused harm to environmental uh, like imbalance you have you can say he is the person who is responsible for environmental imbalance when it ca when uh, he, uh, basically like uh, while throwing or just uh, discharging hazardous Uh, objects or hazardous substances in the yamuna river so how are you going to draft that brief report as if i promised you that i'm going to come up with the specimen part also and uh, there i have explained you that how there is an allegation on koshlendra bhagat mr koshlendra bhagat and uh, the claim is when it comes to environmental protection authority you must remember that uh, the person cannot actually discharge any harmful waste in the river yamuna since he is living in taj trapezium zone it becomes more intense and uh, the case uh, brief law report would be written uh, like this when i talk about uh, this uh, writing skill so remember the first thing that is there is related to the case first of all what is the title remember that the first thing that you must focus is the title the title of our report the title of our report is environmental protection authority versus koshlendra bhagat now in this case you must remember that environmental protection authority 
versus Kaushalendra Bhagat who is actually the culprit. Till now like you are writing this report and why these reports are uh, written actually? Any idea, anyone? Basically these reports become the specimen or you can say the precedence for the next or upcoming cases related to the same issues maybe. So that people can legal authorities or legal uh, like uh, people who are related to this field, lawyers or judges or maybe attorneys, they can definitely uh, can, can take the uh, you can say references through these particular cases like precedences. So now it comes to the second cat, the things, the first thing that will come is fact. You must know that you are going to accumulate all the facts that are there all the facts, all the retail, relevant details, you must come up with relevant details remember which is really very important. When it comes to relevant details, the important part is in this you are going to come up with the actual reason why it happened. So please look up this particular side where I have written in the case of environmental protection authority versus Kaushalendra Bhagat. The defendant Mr. Kaushalendra Bhagat, a resident of Taj trapezium zone, since he lives in the periphery of uh, Taj Mahal, therefore that called, that area is called TTZ, where people are not allowed to even build their houses without the permission, since it creates a problem in the environment and creating the harm to the Taj Mahal. So, he has been accused, stands accused of causing environmental harm through the discharge of hazardous substances. Maybe he might be uh, doing or he might be some uh, creating, uh, producing some chemical or maybe like doing some illicit activity at home that may create some kind of hazardous substances and discharging those substance in the uh, river Yamuna. So into the river Yamuna, so this is the whole gist of you can say the fact what we have accumulated. The charges are bought under section 33704. Remember that this is again a very important part when it comes to the section, section 33. It is very important when it comes to section 33. This is related to environmental protection authority. So you must draw, use these statutes. You must use these statutes which is really very important. Section 33 article of the Environmental Protection Act, remember, which explicitly prohibits, which explicitly prohibits the release of pollutants into protected air waterways. You must know that you as a citizen are not allowed to discharge any hazardous, any hazardous element or any hazardous substance in the protected waterways and this is the big crime you know and uh, in that condition you must remember that these things are prohibited. So this is the first step where you will write the title on the top and after that title you must know that you should include the facts. What is the periphery on which you are going to come up with your law report? Not the periphery, the platform, pedestal on which you are going to create that one. Further you can talk about the second aspect, this is relevant statutes. Relevant statutes are section like talking about the Environmental Protection Act, the relevant statutes is section 33-704. So what does it say? You should write the relevant statutes in that law report. Any person within the Taj trapezium zone found discharging hazardous substances into protected waterways shall be held liable for environmental harm and appropriate penalties shall be imposed. So this has already been mentioned in our constitution under section 33 that if any person is caught red handed or not, if someone complains against him and found discharging hazardous or sometimes hazardous means fatal, fatal substance into protected air waterways shall be held liable for environmental harm and in that condition that will certainly harm the global 
warming it will certainly harm the environmental uh, create the environmental imbalance and appropriate penalties remember this word is already been used and appropriate penalties shall be imposed so this particular relevant statutes clearly indicates what come on tell me clearly indicates that on the basis of this statutes clearly indicates that on the basis of this statute no one can cause harm to environment right everyone so this is the this is particular the foundation on which your case is strengthened understood everyone so this is relevant statutes further what is the legal issue now you must come up with the third aspect that is legal issue you must remember that when it comes to legal issue you uh, it's not like any tom dick and harry write anything right there has to be some kind of legal background to it so what is the legal issue over here the crux crux means the shot or you can say the uh, uh, the summary of this particular uh, case of the legal matter revolves around whether mr koshle in the bhagat residing in the taj trapezium zone can be held accountable under section 33704 for the environmental harm caused by the discharge of hazardous substance into the yamuna river so this is the legal issue remember that legal issue mentioning that legal issue is again a very important task when we talk about that case on the whole from third person's view what is the case actually that under section 33 environmental protection act whether this person has really committed any crime or not whether he is allowed to do that thing or not so this is this is actually the crux legal issues the crux basically so the crux of the legal matter revolves around whether mr koshle in the bhagat residing in the taj trapezium zone is allowed or can be held responsible for the same reason clear understood everyone the first thing that you are going to mention is title second thing that you are going to mention is facts what are the facts that are there on the basis of which you are going to apply that you are going to start with law, law reports drafting third relevant statutes what is the relevant statutes on the basis of which you are going to come up with that kind of case case law or case study or you are going to create the precedents for the other cases and fourth is you can talk about the legal issues you can talk about the legal issue so now the crux will come crux means the summary of that particular thing will come and further you will talk about certain other parameters that is relevant case law look when it comes to regular report you need not to worry about the relevant things you are not uh, need not to worry about the other cases that has happened related to the same kind or maybe of the same kind but here since it is the legal report you must know that it should have the relevant case laws which can actually provide the kind of uh, uh, you can say defense and in that condition you must know that taj environmental protection authority versus green chemicals limited has actually gone through the same kind of problem and where green uh, green chemicals limited has also also like was also punished or uh, has paid the penalty for the related things so these are precedents you know same type of cases that took place remember so relevant case laws have you understood the meaning of relevant case laws that means the cause the the same kind of laws the same kind of cases that were that has already happened in previous days and you can take the example of this those cases and come up with the conclusion uh, with this particular one so in taj environmental protection authority versus green chemicals limited a precedent case precedent case means like something that has already taken earlier the previous case the court established a precedent that corporation that that corporations operating within the taj trapezium zone 
are strictly liable for environmental harm resulting from the release of hazardous substances. The court emphasized the paramount importance of the section 33704 in such cases. Paramount importance, remember. So, by giving this particular example, you are trying to make your case more strengthened. You are trying to come up with your defense. So, now in this condition, yes, Green Chemicals Limited has also, there was also emphasized or was taken to the court and under section 33704 in such cases, paramount importance of environmental conservation is important, was proved importance. Second case you can give the example is Yamuna River Guardians versus Industrial Enterprises. Now, Yamuna River Guardians versus Industrial Enterprises, in this case what happened? Yamuna River Guardians versus inter, uh, Industrial Enterprises further solidifies the strict liability principle outlined in section 33704. So, what is that? In this section also, this case also strengthened and exemplified the same thing. Remember all these cases, all these things are uh, imaginary, fictitious, yeah. Only uh, environmental, like uh, environmental protection authority and uh, like environmental protection, uh, like uh, this article section 33 is uh, the relevant one, is, is actually the part which is real. Otherwise, the names are fictitious. The court held the intent of the defendant is irrelevant intent, the concern of the defendant is irrelevant when determining liability for environmental harm, underscoring the responsibility of entities within Taj trapezium zone to prevent pollution. So, this is the first and foremost responsibility of people who are staying in Taj trapezium zone, where they are supposed to maintain the ecological balance and they must, they are responsible for maintaining or decreasing the AQI index, air quality index. So, this is again a very important thing. So, here like we have seen by giving these two examples, you have learned that on the basis of this section 33, these two cases as a precedence were fought and the whole procedural again with the decisions. So, that you can come up with your own answers, so that you can come up with your own law reports. So, this is very important. Fifth part is courts holding. Now, courts holding is something that is like what is the decision actually? Finally, you can take up considering the like on the basis of these two cases, what is the courts holding? What is the courts decision? So, you can just see this part considering the precedent state set in Taj Environmental Protection Authority versus Green Chemicals Limited, and the second one is the first one is Taj, and the second one is. Yamuna River Guardians versus Industrial Enterprises, the court in Environmental Protection Authority versus Kaushalendra Bhagat held that Mr. Kaushalendra Bhagat is liable for the environmental harm caused by the discharge of hazardous substances into the Yamuna River. So, on the basis of that, I have created another crime. I have actually proved this particular point that Kaushalendra, Mr. Kaushalendra Bhagat has done something which is uh, worth or which is not worth or which is unworthy and therefore, he has to pay the penalty either uh, behind the bars for 5 years or maybe pay the penalty. So, the court stressed the strict liability standard established by section 33704 emphasizing that the defendant's intent is not valid defense whether knowingly or unknowingly, consciously or unconsciously intentionally or unintentionally. We remember, this is a crime, this is actually a wrongdoing where a person cannot skip the repercussions of this, remember. So, this is the valid defense where defendant's intent cannot be, cannot be accepted. Then, you must come up with precedential value. Precedential value means the precedential value of Taj environmental protection authority versus green chemicals and Yamuna river guardians versus industrial enterprises is a pivotal. Pivotal is very important. Pivotal is important. So, this is important in affirming the strict liability principle enshrined in section 33704 
these cases provide a solid foundation for future litigations. So, this particular case has already uh, been taken as a precedence for other cases in the future. Therefore, these cases provide a solid foundation, solid foundation for future litigations, for future cases within the Taj trapezium zone, ensuring, ensuring what? Ensuring is like maybe giving the confirmation that a consistent interpretation and application of the statute to hold individuals accountable, accountable is answerable, answerable, answerable for environmental harm resulting from the discharge of hazardous substance. So, this is how you are going to draft this particular law report with precedential value and courts holdings also. That is the decision, this part is the decision what uh, court has taken and further whether this particular case can be treated as a precedential value for the upcoming litigations, yes of course, future litigations it could be used as the precedence. And then further as I told you recommendations and, and, and uh, references are again very important. References and re recommendations because they actually play a very important role. When it comes to the case laws, you must quote the correct examples, the correct references so that it may not create a problem later on, creating a, some kind of like authenticity proof or maybe like that. So, it must talk about the recommendations last at, at the end. Recommendations, so based on the analysis, based on the analysis, whatever we have analyzed throughout the whole law report. So, based on the analysis, it is recommended that the court imposes sanctions and penalties on Mr. Uh, Anil Kumar or you can take Mr. Uh, Koshlendra on whom that uh, whole case was running on. So, Mr. Koshlendra in accordance with section 33704, additionally a comprehensive environmental remediation plan may be recommended to address and mitigate the harm caused to the Yamuna river. So, basically under section 33 they have created some, uh, they have actually told you about the penalties, about the sanctions that are imposed on the people who are creating harm. Additionally, what is that recommendation? Something that you su suggest, something that you propose from your side. So, remember that what are your proposals? That that a comprehensive environmental remediation plan, that, that we must have a remediation plan also, a constant, constant is a permanent, so that nobody can occur these kind of crime in the later years, maybe, maybe for future litigations when we are using these precedence cases, should not happen basically. So, they must have the comprehensive environmental remediation plan, may be recommended to address and mitigate the harm caused to the Ramna river. So, there has to be a permanent, permanent remedy to abort all these type of illegal activities and so this is what recommendations are like what are your suggestions basically, what are your suggestions, what are your findings, what are your proposals, so that will come in this category of recommendations. Last but not the least citations and references, my dear learners this is very important. When it comes to blue book, remember legal uh, phrases, legal maxims, all these legal uh, like uh, reviews and articles they are, uh, they actually use blue book for their references and citations. Generally we use APA style, MLA style for legal we use blue book and thereafter citations and references are used. So, remember for this case since it is an imaginary one, a fictitious one, so therefore Environmental Protection Act section 33704, then Taj Environmental Protection Authority versus Green Chemical Limited, the year of that case when it happened, then volume of that case, after that volume you must come up with the reporter's name and page number. So, this is further you can definitely deal with these things like mentioning year, volume, reporter and page. Further the last thing that we have is Yamuna River Guardians versus Industrial Enterprises. This, remember the second uh, case 
uh, which I uh, like referred over here is Yamna River Gardens versus Industrial Enterprises. In this year, volume, reporter, page, all these things will be incorporated. So, remember that these legal authorities provide a foundation for the analysis and conclusions drawn in this report. So, these things are the important part when it comes to law report writing and brief report writing. So, at the end, the conclusion part, effective brief writing and law report drafting are essential skills and essential skills that require practice and attention, attention to uh, details, you can say. You, can, you cannot come up with all these things and legal professionals should continuously refine these skills to communicate their arguments in a much better manner, decisions clearly and persuasively. These are the references that I have taken uh, from the, the text or maybe like all these articles. So, these are some legal research and writing, a practical approach and paralegals, then further Aspen handbook for legal writers, then lawyer write, writes, then further just writing grammar, punctuation and style for legal writers. Then we have scholarly writing further, I have taken reference, I have uh, referred these books also. So, with this note, I am Dr. Divya Gupta, an assistant professor at GLA University signing off for now. But remember that if you are brief, if you are there to write uh, a law report, you must focus on certain parameters and which are they? You must focus on title, first of all, you come up with the analysis part you must talk about the case laws, you must talk about the precedents, you must talk about the uh, several other factors which are affecting your analysis. Third, last recommendations and last but not the least, please come up with, rec with, with references and citations in blue book pattern. So, this is again a very important thing. Thank you everyone, signing off for now. Thank you. See you next uh, in the in lecture 18 where we would study certain other parameters on which we are going to learn brief writing and uh, moreover talking about juristic writings. Yes, thank you everyone. Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. We usually know William Shakespeare as the most revered figure in the history of English literature. But we often tend to forget that he has also been one of the most hated figures in literature. And here I am not talking only about those boys and girls who have to memorize uh, long sections from Macbeth or King Lear or Julius Caesar uh, before they can go and sit for their school and, or college exams. But I am also talking about people who are themselves quite famous authors. Tolstoy, for instance, considered the writings of Shakespeare to be, and I quote, crude, immoral, vulgar and senseless. George Bernard Shaw absolutely loathed Shakespeare as he did Homer. But perhaps no other criticism about Shakespeare is more damaging than the one which says that Shakespeare is a marvellous storyteller, provided someone has told him the story earlier. Now, this piece of criticism is particularly damaging because it is true. None of Shakespeare's plays contain any original story whatsoever. They are all written using pre-existing materials, pre-existing stories. Now, does that diminish the stature of Shakespeare as a dramatist? Well, I'll leave that for you to decide. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippets.